Okay, so you know how everyone's talking about telecommuting and the future of work, right? Right. Well, we're diving deep into that today. We've got excerpts from this research paper all about communication and relationships in telecommuting. And let me tell you, it is fascinating. It's definitely a hot topic. Yeah. So get this. One of the big things that jumped out at me was how much telecommuting, you know, working from home or remotely really impacts how we relate to our colleagues. And it's not just, oh, I miss those water cooler chats. It goes way deeper. I mean, think about it. Exactly. When you're not in the office, you miss out on those little interactions, those quick chats in the hallway. And those little things add up, right? Totally. They build camaraderie, a sense of belonging. And without them. The study found loneliness and isolation are big concerns for some telecommuters. And we're not just talking, oh, I miss my coworkers. It's deeper than that. It can impact productivity. Really? Yeah, even job security, because you feel less connected to the company. Wow, that's, I never thought about it that way. That's kind of alarming. But I guess it makes sense, right? <laughs> You're not there. You don't see what's going on. Out of sight, out of mind sort of thing. Exactly. And then there's a whole thing about locus of control. The research mentioned that. Mm. Basically, it's like some personalities are just better suited for the freedom of telecommuting. So, like, some people are just wired to be their own boss at home. Yeah. And others, they need that office environment. It's like a spectrum, right? Okay, I like that. A spectrum. On one end, you've got people who thrive on autonomy. They love setting their own hours, managing their own time. And honestly, they find it easier to focus when they're away from the distractions of a traditional office. That makes sense. So those are like your ideal telecommuters then? Absolutely. They excel in that environment. Okay. So then on the other end of the spectrum. You've got folks who really thrive on that structure, that social energy of an office. They like being around their colleagues. They like having clear expectations, maybe set schedules. Yeah. And for them, working remotely can be isolating. That makes a lot of sense. It's like knowing yourself, knowing how you work best. Right. But and this is important. It's not all in the individual. The company plays a huge role here, too. I think that's key, right? Because you can't just say, OK, everyone work from home and expect it to be magical. Exactly. It's like if the office is a fishbowl, the company needs to create this virtual aquarium that's just as good, you know? I like that analogy. Make it engaging. Yeah. So we're talking about things like maybe structured e-mentoring programs where new telecommuters have a go-to person for guidance or reliable video conferencing tech so meetings actually feel like you're in the room together, not just talking to a screen. I've been in some of those meetings. It's rough. Right. And then even just scheduling occasional on-site gatherings. That way you're maintaining those personal connections, whether it's team building activities or just casual get togethers. So companies really got to get creative to build that sense of community, even when everyone's miles apart. And it's crucial, right? Because that feeling of connection, it reduces isolation, but also it fosters this sense of belonging. Which then, of course, like you said, impacts job satisfaction, productivity, all of that. Exactly. It's all connected. This is giving me a lot to think about. So basically what we're learning is communication and relationships. They're essential for telecommuting to really work well. And it's a two-way street. Both individuals, A&D companies, have to be proactive. Any last thoughts you want to leave us with on that? The future of work. I think it requires a real shift in how we think about work itself. We can't be stuck on the idea that it has to happen in a specific place. We've got to embrace flexibility, prioritize those connections, whether we're physically present or not. I love that. Intentionally building those relationships, no matter where we're working. Now, here's something I want everyone listening to think about. What would your ideal work environment look like, remote or not, if you prioritize those connections? What would you change? Food for thought. 